Hi folks, Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiatoria. So I've spoken many times in the past about Ewart Oakeshott and his typology. What is that? Well, very simply, um, there was a chap called Ewart Oakeshott who died approximately 10 years ago, if I remember correctly now, um, and um, he was pretty much the leading expert on medieval swords for much of the latter half of the 20th century. He wrote um, several books, many articles for journals, and he developed a typology which has become the standard kind of go-to reference typology to refer to medieval swords. Um, now, um, I was actually asked uh, a couple of days ago about Ewart Oakeshott's typology and where to find it. It's actually very easy to find, so long as you know how to spell, spell Oakeshott, um, but I will nevertheless put a link to Oakshot's typology right below this video um, in a URL. And um, it is a typology that was developed over a number of years between the 1950s, 60s, uh, right the way through to the sort of end of the 1980s, sort of beginning of the 1990s. And it evolved a little bit, but essentially it stayed more or less the same. And um, Oakshot has just over 20 types within his typology. Now, what does that typology describe? It describes straight, double-edged uh, medieval swords, both one-handed and two-handed. It does not describe other medieval swords such as falchions or um, hangers or these kind of things, um, or um, sabres even. It just describes double-edged straight swords and um, it spans a period from essentially about the 9th century, should we say, 9th, 10th century at the earliest, um, uh, uh, right the way through to the end of the 15th century, should we say. I mean, in fact, some of the types do go into the 16th century, but essentially it's a it's a it's sort of um, 1000 AD to 1500 AD typology. Um, I should just mention, Ewart Oakeshott wrote um, many books uh, and journals, uh, uh, journal uh, articles, as I mentioned, but the principal books that he wrote are Records of the Medieval Sword, which I highly recommend you buy. I also highly recommend you buy The Archaeology of Weapons, again, by Ewart Oakeshott. And... Um, Slightly less known and slightly less useful, I would say, is The Sword in the Age of Chivalry, although if you're into medieval swords, there are not a huge number of good books out there to buy, so buy it as well. Anyway, so those are the three main books, Records of the Medieval Sword, The Archaeology of Weapons, and The Sword in the Age of Chivalry. They're all excellent works, and as I say, they're really, when people are talking about medieval swords, talking about different types, they very much refer to Ewart Oakeshott's typology. Now, what is a typology? Very simply, it's a way of making it easier to refer to certain types of sword. As I've mentioned in previous videos, in, let's say, the, the late 14th um, or 15th century, when this type of sword was in use, it was simply known as a sword, or very sometimes things like an arming sword. Um, usually, they didn't give specific names to um, swords that had relatively little um, difference between them. So, you know, a one-handed double-edged sword was just known as a sword, or sometimes an arming sword, and that's pretty much it. So, if we've got two swords that are both one-handed double-edged straight swords, but they have different blade shapes, how do we refer to those? And that's when a typology, um, a modern created typology, can be useful. So, for example, this we can say is a, an oak shot Type 15. Um, blade. A Type 15 blade is characterised by a blade that's essentially triangular. It starts off um, broad and tapers pretty much either in a slightly curved line or in a straight line to a point um, and is pointy essentially um, and it's double edged and straight. Um, so that's a Type 15. A Type 18 for example would have slightly bowed out edges and be uh, a little bit more, um, there'd be a more sudden gradient towards the point at the end. Um, in fact Type 15 and Type 18 can sometimes be quite difficult to tell apart. Um, if we look at a Norman, sort of Norman Conquest period sword, they tend to be Type 10, Type 11 blades. You'll notice that Ewart Oakeshott's typology starts at Type 10. That's presumably because he intended to have 
types of sword that came before 10, but he never created any types that come before 10, in fact. He did write about earlier period swords, certainly if you look in um, the archaeology of weapons you can find stuff about Viking era swords and migration era swords, um, and even Roman um, equipment as well. And he did write about later complex hilted swords of the 16th century and, and onwards, but his main focus was medieval swords. So as I say, I'll put that link below here, I hope it proves useful. Uotoke, just a sort of closing remark, Uotoke Shot's typology is not perfect. As I mentioned, the, uh, the sort of classification between certain types is fuzzy at best um, in some cases. So for example, between type 15 and type 18, sometimes you look at a sword and it's really difficult to say is that a type 15 or is that a type 18, and it can be quite subjective. Unfortunately, this is often the case with typologies. The other thing is it doesn't include everything. There are blade types which don't really fit clearly into any of Uotoke Shot's numbered types. Um, and there are always exceptions to the rule. Um, so it's not a perfect typology, but it's the only one that we've currently got. He was certainly the first person to make a good typology for um, sort of middle to late um, medieval swords. Um, and it's become common usage in amongst everybody who's interested in medieval arms and armour, so it's very much sort of entrenched in our in our minds and we refer to it all the time. Possibly in the future, someone who is very advanced in that topic, someone like Clive Thomas for example, might choose to add types or subtypes. So for example in type 18 we've got 18A, 18B, 18C. Someone might choose to add extra categories to the typology and it might be a useful thing to do. Um, however, at the moment, the typology is as Oakshot left it um, when he died. So, um, there we go guys, I hope that's useful, and when you hear me talking about type 15 or type 17 or whatever um, in the future, you now know what I'm talking about is Oakshot's typology, and check it out below here. Cheers folks! Thank you for watching, please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.